Ladies and gentlemen, award-winning playwright, author, and humorist, the man David Sedaris is invited to open for him when his book tours have brought him to the West Coast. Please welcome Dylan Brody. Harold Pinter. <laughs> Knew the power of silence. As a child, I noticed two different kinds of silence. On Sunday mornings, it seemed everyone in town, other than my family, filed into church, leaving the streets empty. I would grab a couple of comic books and find a comfortable place to reread them, often outdoors. In that rich, encompassing silence, I would read every word of dialogue, every advertisement, every letter to the editor, the editorial comment at the front from Stan Lee. <laughs> Excelsior. <laughs> when I finished reading, I sat where I was, on a curb or the stairs to my house or the lawn outside the closed library and daydreamed freely, my young mind exploring the possibilities of flight and strength and x-ray specs. <laughs> Later, as I discovered the more complex and heady world of science fiction and fantasy, the work of C.S. Lewis and Lloyd Alexander, Robert Heinlein and Ray Bradbury, and Ursula Le Guin and Roger Zelazny and Madeline Lengel synaptically connected themselves to the smells of cut grass if they were red in summer, and fallen leaves in autumn. These readings left me thinking complex thoughts about the nature of reality and the reality of nature. I followed winding paths of thought, imagining, philosophizing, inventing, exploring inwardly. This expansive silence made the town seem safe. It did not often feel safe. The day that we moved in, we drove all night long. I was four years old, just able to make out the sign with my reading skills that said, welcome to Schuylerville, population 954. And to give you a sense of the sort of town this was, that afternoon, the old white-haired mayor himself, because we had moved in, drove to the sign with a bucket o paint. <laughs> <laughs> and in a Norman Rockwell gesture, amended the sign to say, and some Jews. <laughs> but the silence settled soft and clean like the winter's first big snowfall. It held a dense, deep, purity. The other kind of silence I knew as a child was very different. This silence, punctuated by the scrape and clatter of silverware, occasionally interrupted by small coughs and sighs, occurred over dinner on evenings following tantrums thrown by my older sister, revelations of sexual indiscretions committed by my father, or times of financial stress that came just a little too close on the heels of a moment that my mother, feeling flush, had splurged on an expensive luxury. This crystalline silence, formed around a single point, branched out icily along a framework of long-harbored resentments. It became a brittle, creaking surface over an impossible, sucking depth of subtext. Harold Pinter. Knew this kind of silence. <laughs> I live in Silmar, California, at the confluence of the mighty 118 and the majestic 210. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, I had a gig in Mill Valley, California, 
an enclave of wealthy former hippies just over the bridge from San Francisco. I gig once or twice a year at the Throckmorton Theater there, where once I saw a rehearsal of the summer theater program for kids, rehearsing a production of Les Miserables, in which a 14-year-old girl played a French peasant in shoes more expensive than my home entertainment center. <laughs> An electrical, an elect, an elect, an elect, an elect, an elect, an elect. Either I or all of you have just had a stroke. <laughs> an electrical problem in my car had rendered the radio and CD player non-functional. I learned only when I was about an hour into the five-hour drive that this problem had also cost me the use of my phone charger. Thus, from about the time that I reached Gorman, the summer home of split pea soup, <laughs> I had been reduced to driving with no distraction at all. No comforting drone of national public radio. No Bruce Springsteen growling lovingly about driving away from a life of disappointment or driving through a town of nostalgic storefronts or driving all night just to buy her some shoes. Not even the intermittent interjections of the British lady in my phone who says, in 1.5 miles, stay left, remain on the I-5 north for the rest of your natural life. I drove in silence through velvety hills and past the moiré effect of neatly planted groves. I drove past gray rocks and brown fields, past cows and strawberries. I passed slow-moving trucks and focused through gusty wind areas. I was passed by Porsches and BMWs and one Maserati, each of which cast me into expansive fantasies of wealth and status. My mind wandered through projects I've been writing and have been hoping to write. I felt, I felt synapses flashing brightly, and I remembered those warm days and chill days sitting on cool concrete or warm grass, reading, imagining. I realized that it had been a long time since I had experienced any real period of silence. Silence is powerful and potent and can be destroyed by a single laugh. In this way, silence is like an erection. <laughs> <laughs> As a stand-up comic, I thought of silence as the enemy. Any pause in the call and response of joke and laughter felt disastrous. Any break in the room's loud rhythm affected me as a personal attack. <laughs> I had, by the time I was headlining on the road, an entire internal Rolodex of saves, startling, often shocking responses to the silence that would jolt an audience back to life. I learned recently that there were comics in the late 80s who would take bets in the back of the room as to how many minutes into my set I could go before I turned on the audience, shouting, fuck you, that's hilarious. <laughs> Over time, that sense of enmity spread beyond my performances. In the car, music or news fills the space. At home, CNN or MSNBC mumbles on while I do dishes or pay bills or nap. Light classical music underscores my writing time and my reading time. I forget that there is value in silence. There is beauty in silence. Silence is the rich, moist soil that nourishes thought. I know this is not just me. I see people jogging with their earbuds in, lost in Barry Diamond or Pink or the original cast album of Flahooli. <laughs> 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 
It's, sometimes a resperience has to be for one in ten. And that's fine. <laughs> Workplaces and waiting rooms are filled with casual conversation that revolves around series binge watched, movies liked or disliked, polarized political talking points memorized from days of broadcast repetition. At the martial arts studio where I study and teach Taekwondo, Hapkido, and Kigumdo, even silent meditation is accompanied by an electronically amplified recording of wind chimes. <laughs> Let me repeat that. <laughs> silent meditation is accompanied by an electronically amplified recording of wind chimes. Thanks to the expensive repair that needed to be done on my car, I rediscovered the power of silence. On the drive to and from Mill Valley, just about 10 hours over two days, I solved a problem with a screenplay I wrote 30 years ago. <laughs> Was able to do the rewrite the moment I got back to my computer. I plotted a new project that I had been tickling with, rolling over in my mind for weeks. I had countless imaginary conversations with my wife, with my parents, with the bullies of my youth. Many of those have already begun to emerge in my work as dialogue that rings frighteningly true, if wittier than it could ever occur. <laughs> The long, exhausting drive left me better recharged, rested, and prepared for renewed creativity than a good night's sleep or an hour with a Mountain Goats album ever could. <laughs> Close your eyes for a moment. Listen to the room. Just listen to it. I'm not going to punk, you, you know what, uh, open your eyes. <laughs> I'm not going to prank you. I'm not going to lull you into a sense of security and then startle you. I am, in fact, a martial arts master, and I want to share with you. <laughs> it worries me when they don't laugh at any of the jokes, and then the personal things I reveal are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, that's not hilarious. <laughs> I want to share with you the sense of safety that I recently rediscovered. So just listen to your breath, and when you're comfortable, close your eyes. You will still hear your own breath. You can listen to your <coughs> own breath and hear my voice. That sound of your breath has been with you from the moment of your birth. That sound will be with you until the moment of your death. As long as you can find that sound, regardless of whatever else is happening in your world, everything is pretty much OK. If silence is the enemy, that sound is all you need to protect you. Sit in silence and listen to your breath. Thoughts and questions will drift across your mindscape. Fantasies and images and feelings will parade across your inner screen. See them, watch them, but see them from the safe cocoon of your breath in the silence. Remember your first experience of silence. Remember the incredible reach of the mind of your childhood and know that it remains available to you. Your capacity for creative thought remains undiminished when you allow the world to go quiet around you. Listen to your breath. Breathe. 
remember, imagine. The power your thoughts can have, the power of a single voice in the vast, silent void. Harold Pinter knew the value of silence. He knew the power of silence. In the silence, know your power. Breathe. Remember. Imagine. Open your eyes. Thank you.